Welcome to the Rene Report, bringing issues of topical interest. Hello everyone, I'm Renee Mera and welcome to the Rene Report, bringing issues of topical interest. Today my guest is actor and she's also director at Debbing for the first time. It's actor Jyoti Singh and she's directed her first film. It's called Yadvi, The Dignified Princess and it's going to be showing at Cinema Village from June 1st to the 7th, four times in a day. Announce the birth of a child all over the state of Patiala. Already, my lord, but she's too young and at a tender stage. What do you think of your wedding, Wandala? No, I want to see him. I must tend to my duties. It's time for me to go to Mahir. As was your responsibility. And uh, Jyoti, this is a very personal film and it's something very close to your heart because Yadvi actually is uh, Jyoti's grandmother she, so she, and she plays her grandmother in this film. And uh, let's go backwards in history. So it's a true film Yes. and uh, it's a film about your grandmother, Princess Yadvi. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go back to her mother and that was uh, uh, Princess Bimal Kaur. Kaur. And, it was uh, Marani Bimal Kaur. And a husband. Husband was Bupinder Singh. Yes. And that he was Maharaja Patiala. Yes. So he had uh, quite a few wives. And so she's the third wife. She's the third wife. She was married to him. And of course, she was his favorite wife. He fell in I love see. with her. And I that see. was one of the you know, stories that our grandmother used to always tell us oh, about her. So, yes. And, and so from Princess Bimalkor, it went to your grandmother. That's uh, Princess Yadvi. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so tell us uh, the making of this film. Obviously, it's about your grandmother and your sister is in this film. Your cousin is in this film. Chandra Chushing is also in this film. Uh, your husband uh, is very much part of this film as well. He's um, Sumit Burma. Yes. Right. Uh, so tell us what made you suddenly decide, OK, I'm going to you know, do this film on my grandmother. Okay, so there was not much planning. My sister had written a screenplay. She had written a story for a while, and then we tried to get another girl to do the screenplay because none of us had ever done a screenplay. So that took like about three or four years. We were writing about it, and that's when Chandra Chirusing had come to the U.S. and he said, "Oh, if you ever make a film, I want to be part of it." So it was kind of one of those things. And a few years went down the road, and then we finally got somebody to write a screenplay, but she couldn't finish it because she had just gone through school training. Right. So then my sister ended up writing the screenplay, and. I don't know, I just had this um, little budget that I decided, my husband had given it to me as a gift, and I decided that I will go to India and try to shoot it. The film, even though I didn't have much experience, I thought I'll hire people and, you know, just right. thought it would I mean, happen. You'd, you've been acting for the last 10 years, but this was your first directorial. Yes, you know, but I didn't plan to direct it. I was just going to act because I wanted to play my grandmother. I felt like I'd lived with her, even though I know that I cannot justify her. Her personality was very yeah, different. But the fact is, like, I felt like, you know, I had lived with her. I would understand her best. So uh, we went to India without any planning, but we took our clothes with us. We kind of said, okay, we'll do it. And we went to Mahir Palace. That's where she got married into, the family, mm -hmm. Mahir Gharana. And uh, so we went to Mahir. We took permission from them if we could shoot there. And they said, yes, you can. They allowed us because, you know, even though we had the things, there was a wedding going on at that time. And they said, after the wedding, you can shoot. 
But then one of my uncles, who is of course Chandra Churu Singh's father, he said, you know, being in Bombay, he said, if anything goes wrong in Mahir, Madhya Pradesh, which is middle of nowhere, yeah. then your whole shoot will stop for weeks because if any bulb breaks or something, they have to go all the way to Bombay to get the new equipment. Right, right. So he said, why don't you shoot in our sets? There's sets there which are they are breaking down. Rani of Jhansi, Rani ki Chha, Jhansi of Rani, I think there's a TV show. Jhansi ki Rani. Jhansi ki Rani TV show. So we said, okay, you know, why not? Why don't we go check it out? So we went to Bombay, we checked it out. We said, okay, fine, we'll shoot here. And then at that point, Point. It was on the outskirts of Bombay. We decided mm -hmm. to shoot at that location because it looks like palace style and it was very nice. So we said, why not just do it there? It will be easier for the actors to commute. Because getting everybody to Madhya Pradesh would be harder. Right. So that's how the whole idea came wow. along. But actually, we went, we went with no planning. I, I'm the kind of person who just jumps into things without planning. <laughs> and I think if, the, if I'd gone through the same process till the whole part till now, maybe things would have been a lot different. <laughs> but I, I guess I just took the plunge and we went for it. Wow. And how long did it take you to make the film? The film, actually, the actual filming, the 90% of the film that was shot in India uh, was one month. It was in 2014, we shot the first part of it, the whole thing, in less than a month. Well, actually, one full month, we had four days off, so in a way, less than a month. And we shot the whole film there. You know, I didn't expect anything big or major out of it, like, because, you know, I'd never made a film before. And then, after that, we came back to the U.S., you know, it took some time off and then like started editing here and there. And then we still had to shoot the first scene. We still didn't know how to relate the movie. And that's how we ended up doing the first scene. We tried Maryland. We tried three takes of the first scene. How do we introduce the film? And then finally, we ended up in New York, shooting the last section in New York. That's the one we kept. Wow. So, so that was in the end of 2016 was the last take we did. Wow. So now your costumes, I think, uh, what I know that you're wearing your grandmother's costumes, right? Yes, most of them. Most of them so were that hers. really brings that authentic flavor right there. First of all, she's your grandma, so you're very close to her, and then you're wearing her costume, so this really gives the whole... The whole know, sari, all the different. saris that everybody wore were, were hers, handed oh. down from, to, her, to, the mom, to my mom. She had three daughters, okay. so my mom had her section of saris, so she distributed amongst us three sisters. I so see. my sister and I, we brought our saris together. We came to, we went to India, and then that's what we used for most of the wow. scenes. Like almost every person who was doing background, or you know, further person there, we they used those clothes, and we took most of our clothes, like lehengas and everything. Right. So we were right. able to use those, except men's outfit. We had to get some made for Chandra yes, and all that yes. stuff. So yeah. So. so you didn't wear his grandfather's or anything like that. No, I mean we didn't have. <laughs> I, think, I mean we got it made, especially in Bombay, some of those. I like see. we had to get it made because it's a certain, you know, and one attire actually in the movie, this, this actually, if you see the poster, this one yeah. he's wearing, yeah. Maharaja Pupinder Singh actually wears an outfit like that in one of the pictures. Yeah. So we actually copied it and got that costume made. So there's one scene in the movie where he's actually wearing a costume that was similar to exactly what Maharaja Pupinder Singh wore. Wow. So. so it's all about this princess, that, you know, it was like a transition time, you know, it was going from monarchy to the government, you know, democracy and everything was... Um, in that change that you know the dynamics were getting different and here was your grandmother and uh, so you bring that dignity and she never took anything from anyone. She, she so basically the story goes into we start with introducing Maharaja Bhupinder Singh in her life and then it's like a little documentary section in the beginning. So that's her father? That's her father, two minutes like explaining who he was and then we'd go into it because you know we couldn't make it we didn't have that kind of budget to make it as glamorous as a Bollywood film so it was an independent film so we made it as you know, as glamorous as we could make right. with the budget we had. And so um, we were trying to just show that, okay, her, how she was raised. And then when she gets married, what happens to her? And how she, in the process of being, losing everything, how she's able to survive and raise her three daughters mm -hmm. and what she does to survive. And, uh, you know, then she moves to there with her brother at the end stages of her life. And uh, of course, we were raised under her for a little while. So, you know, we kind of, we only go to the journey where she, we don't even show us, like, we kind of just show that till her daughter's time, till her husband passes, and what happens to her, and that was it. So we kind of go through her journey. Mm -hmm. It's like basically a simple process for a woman's journey, her struggles, and I remember like going to uh, Rishikesh Film Festival, one, one commoner person, like he said, I'm a commoner, and he said, I'm surprised, I never knew that how even royalty went through the experience and how they suffered and what they did to survive. So that was kind of, he said, nobody's ever shown that part, mm. that aspect of filming, mm. in the filming, 
when they show royalty, they just show oh, big people, you know, whatever yes. they have money. So yeah. they yeah. never showed their struggles too. That's right, because so. you know all the glamour and the glitz is shown for the royalty, but yeah. you showed the darker side, the struggles and you know the trials and tribulations, yes. and especially as a woman, you know what she had to go through. And those days, you know, women rights were not that much in That's India, true. and and to have that courage and that valor that she, your grandmother showed. Yes. And I think that's what you're portraying in this film. Definitely, that's what that's the whole point of the film. It's, it's an inspiring film. A lot of people have been inspired, the ones who've seen it. They've been like, a lot of women have cried. <laughs> a lot of women have like, you know, said that to me, like they cried because, and one woman who is my friend here in New York, she's like 80 years old, and she watched the film twice, and she said before editing and after editing, and she told me that she could relate her life to wow. my grandmother's story, because she said that, you know, being raised from that era also kind of like, you know, she's 84, whatever. And she said that she could relate, you know, when how New York was, it doesn't have to be an Indian person to relate mm -hmm. to it. She said, you know, she could relate to it exactly the way things change in your life, the way things mm -hmm. happen. So she said she could totally relate to the film. Right. It's, and it's in English, of course, the film. The whole film is in English. It's, it's English. got a sub, um, so the dialogues are completely in English? They're completely in English. There are a few people, you know, when the servants come and talk to Maharaja, right. it might be in Hindi, and the songs are in Hindi. But right. otherwise, the music is, of course, classical, mostly the background score. I see. But uh, otherwise, the movie is pretty much in English. And you know, I made it for international audience. When I, was, right. when I was making it, I was thinking, you know, I live in New York, and I want right. more people to see the films. So that was the whole idea behind right. it. Right. And to go into Hindi, now you think about Maharajas and all, you'll have to go to Urdu, you'll have to go to that style. So you have right. to really, really go into the depth of it. You cannot just make a film. You know, it's like yeah, so. Yeah. So you had to keep that, you know, that authentic flavor. So yeah. you have to use the same you, language. Otherwise, you then do it in English. Yeah. So now this film has gotten four awards already, I believe, right? No, it has twenty-two awards actually. Twenty-two. Oh 22. my God. So, so it's like it's amazing. Some film festivals gave us two or three. They really like yes. the film. The ones who did twenty-four. Us. Twenty-four. Yes. Wow. So, that's yeah. amazing. And uh, what? When was the first? Uh, you know, the premiere. The first was it in India? So interestingly. It's very beautiful the way it worked out. So Dehradun is where she passed. Right. And uh, Dehradun is where she lived and stages of her life. And Dehradun Film Festival is the first one to screen it. And it screened on September 9th. It's, it was on her birthday. Last year. It was in 2016. It was the I first, first film festival. The last year we went through different film festival rounds. I see. But um, 2016, September 9th was the first screening ever. And that was her birthday. That's And then interestingly, nice. Rishikesh wow. Film Festival actually screened the film on Women's Day um, in 2017. It was very interesting the way things had worked out and the, the, wow. the organizer kind of reminded me that how they had screened the film in Dehradun Film Festival and wow. they brought it back to Rishikesh Film Festival. So it was interesting that he also related that he told us mm -hmm. and it was in April around the time that my grandmother passed away. So kind of, it's so very relevant. Yes, yeah, very relevant. Especially you know, when yeah. your grandma did so much. Um, the strength, the character that you're bringing out, and you said you're not very much like her, so was it very difficult to portray your grandmother? You know, I, In a way, it's good because you know her. Yes. In a way, it was like you have to get into her you know, skin, under her I skin. I mean, I think I could have done a better job if I wasn't directing, but uh, the, the fact is, uh, I would say that you know, her persona, when she walked, it, people, at least in Dehradun, that one who, one, people who knew her, she was just very elegant. Her style of dressing was very different. You know, when you look at her, the way she spoke to us, it was so different. I mean, I tried to bring that out, but I still don't feel like I justified it. A lot of people have told me that I do carry myself well and I do act like that because I'm a very like hyper bubbly kind of person. <laughs> but her, you know, persona was very uh, strict and kind of followed rules completely. So very different personality. You know, she had a very good heart. But also, like she was very strict about certain things, timing. She was very punctual, so there was no ever coming late for anything. Even if food had to be right on time, if it's seven, it's seven o'clock. Tea has to be four o'clock. She was very, very strict in that stuff. But you know, I think, and but her personality was—I don't know. I've never met anybody like her. It's mm -hmm. like you know, when you meet as you go through your life journey, I just have never met anybody who comes close to her. Wow. Like, so I mean, you lived, I think, the first thirteen years of your life with yes. her. Um, what rubbed up on you? I mean, that time obviously you did not know you're going to be making a film on your grandmother, but some of her attributes and her qualities, you know, which well, you have probably imbibed, besides, of course, the film we're talking yeah. about, and what would they be? Well, I would say she was very giving. Uh, I saw her give to, as, like, she would bring servants and these young kids, and she would be like, okay, you can work these many hours, and then she would send them to school. She'll get clothes made for them, that they look nice in school. She'll buy them book bags. She was very giving in that sense. I mean, a lot of the times these servants didn't want that lifestyle, so they would run away. Mm. And very interestingly, that she, was, she wanted to give opportunity to people. 
you know, through her, one of our other people who lived at the back, the son went to Dubai and, you know, made himself. So she was very giving. So I think, you know, I take that a little bit. I do, you know, do some nonprofit work. I do go teach kids in India uh, sometimes. So I think that comes probably from her. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it was just in me or if it's just watching her do stuff like that. Um, I am actually very punctual. I know I was kind of late to it, but <laughs> I'm actually very punctual. I kept that concept in my life. I think it just came naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is like, um, she, had, she had like, I don't know, her personality, her strictness. You know, when I work, I'm very strict. And she was like that too. And she worked. Mm-hmm. She was very strict, but she was very loving towards plants. I don't know. I never got into plants, yeah. but I'm very loving towards animals. So I don't know if that's uh, something that's her attribute uh, or contribution. You know, when I was a kid, I never knew her struggles. You know, mm. she used to read books to us, like story books. She used to sit there talk about BBC News and what happened in the, what's happening in the world. She was so educated. You know, it's like you would sit and every evening she would sit and talk with us. Um, she would take us out to movies. So we would we were like kids. We were scared of her a little bit. So so we would go and pray upstairs, and she would hear us praying from downstairs. Mm. So she used to call us downstairs and say, "What do you guys want?" And we would be like, "Oh, we want to." Um, we wanted to go watch a movie, so she would take us. We would all get ready and go. She would get us clothes made. Uh, just a very womanly kind of woman. She would actually even ask us who our boyfriend is. She was ahead of her time. She was much ahead of her time. Like she would say, and she made us wear shorts. At that time, nobody would wear shorts. Girls in India would not, but she would be like, oh, wear shorts. And then, you know, she would, she would cut my sister's hair, even though they're Punjabis. <laughs> uh, we were Punjabi. And... Um, but, you know, she was very modern in her thinking. Her thinking was very modern. Uh, she was not as close-minded as mm. somebody, you know. So for that time to meet a grandmother. This is like in the 1920s, 30s, right? That's no, this is. Uh, 1940s? When, uh, no, this. Your grandmother's era, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I guess they were raised by British 40s, that kind yeah, of possible. thing. Yeah, possible. Yeah. Maybe that's why that that's gave she, her. So that's the time, you know, like we're talking closer to the partition, the independence yeah. of India. And did she take a role in that as well? No, I mean, she had her own struggles. I mean, as a woman raising her kids and I, you know, that time the whole, when the monarchy yes. ended and everything else, I mean, she was struggling to raise her own children. She right. was in Rani Khed. So, uh, she, of course, she couldn't really be involved in that. And women at that time, yeah. I mean, where did they have any rights? Yes. So yes. she was just focusing on her life, raising her children in Rani Khed all by herself, you know, and uh, that was her life at that moment. So. I guess in the whole independence thing, she did not. But of course, she knew. She was very aware because I remember her just talking to us. And like I said, she was so educated. Mm. She knew about the world. She was listening to BBC News every night. So, you know, she would discuss sometimes politics. Of course, we never understood that time. Right, right. But she was very much into, you know, like reading a lot of books. She read to her end of her life. She read a lot of books. Wow. Because so. th- that era is so uh, difficult and different, you know. I mean, she was growing up in the 20s, 1930s, and then, yeah. you know, then you're meeting up in the 60s, 70s, you know. The last part of her life, that's what she was. She, she, yeah, she passed in 1992, so it was kind of like still, um, yeah, I mean. So you were with her in the 80s with yes. her, you know. And, yes. And that's yes. the your growing years were very important. And, uh, and this you have brought out in the film. I mean, any special scene that... Uh, that really, you know, makes it look so very uh, uplifting for you that, you know, how that's it. That's my grandmother. I'm sure if she's watching, she's going to love this. Well, my grandmother was, first of all, never, never, I guess, I don't think she was ever like if we made a film on her. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's one thing that we did was when she goes to uh, back after her husband passes and she goes back to Mahir, she wears a certain outfit. And that's what I remember her as. So we made sure that the way she dressed up is what we portrayed at that scene, like her sunglasses and a sari coming out of her jacket. And so um, that moment was very special. And that moment, I actually cried too, because that's the only time we show her as, as uh, not, not even weak, as expressing emotions. But again, she does it in the car. Like it's not in public. Because she never showed exp- emotions to in public. Actually, I never saw her cry. But, the, you know, it's a film. So we wanted to show that little bit aspect of her. Oh, vulnerability. Yeah, vulnerability. Yeah. And so, um, you know, that was kind of like very touching. I think my sister, she felt was when we showed the death scene, I think. She, yeah. she said she cried at that moment because, you know, she was lying on the bed. And I think the makeup was old. I don't know. It was kind of like for her, it was more. For me, I was just like trying to not breathe. But yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's yeah. a different thing. But uh, for her, it was very touching. So what moment. did your sister play in this film? She plays herself. So we go back in time. She starts in New York, 
saying this is my life and this is how the movie starts. I see. And then she goes and explains to my niece and nephew what the what the story is about. I see. And then it, then it goes into the actual drama of the movie, the I actual see. filming where I come in and I play Yadvi and her life. So right. so we do show from birth till. Death. It's like a whole journey of hers. We do show that. And Chandrachur Singh plays. Uh, he plays Maharaja Prabhupada Maharaj Singh. How is it, you know, playing with him? He's, he's very well known. I actually don't shoot. I don't actually act with him in the film. I he's actually. only like one or two scenes. I, well, he was in about three or four scenes, but I but actually. You're with him in a scene together. No, no I was not. not. So I, I come in the older stage when she gets married and goes to her I husband's see. house. I see. Uh, he is all, only to the point where he's alive. Correct. Maharaj Prabhupada Singh. So I see. and then we switch the characters. Hmm. So we kind of go from that time frame to the time that she goes to the husband's house we switch right um, because we there's a younger girl who plays right. the younger right. part so that's so but I mean. you directed him because she has a director <laughs> how was it <laughs> I did I mean uh, he was very good I mean he knew his lines he yeah. was always very prepared for with his lines uh, so it was easy to work with him I mean he basically you know would do his take and of course my since it was my first time directorial debut uh, of course my sister was assisting me and also Jigme, my cinematographer, was also helping me and guiding me through the direction process because he said anyway cinematographer does that. He said a cameraman does that. So he would also sometimes say, okay, well, the scene is not looking this, you know, good. So maybe up it or lower it or mm -hmm. whatever. He'll tell the character that. So it helped having him because I had taken Jigme from 9-11 shoot. I see. I had worked, well, with, him. worked with him. So okay. I was like, well, you know, somebody so peaceful, he's from Bhutan. I was like, this is the kind of person I need. And he did not know how to speak Hindi. So it was kind of interesting. Wow, that's that's interesting. And then, uh, how long is this film? Ninety minutes. It's uh, it's ninety. So it's an hour and forty nine minutes. Okay. So it's a one ten. Oh, I see. So it's like hour and forty nine minutes. Because I mean, we do have a little bit of uh, three minute documentary section in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then you know we just show pictures of everybody yeah. who's living and and a family tree. So we do show that. I see. So that would make sense to people who are watching the film, kind of. Yes, you get yeah. a full idea. Of and the classical music is done by whom, the score? So Anuj Karik is our music director. I mean, of course, uh, once we had the film made, that's what took one year. So it was back and forth, back and forth. And you know, I would tell him, no, I want this. I want Sarangi or I want... My husband actually was very much into the Sarangi and uh, mm -hmm. everything what he wanted, we kind of worked it out. So whatever he would send us, we would say, no, we don't want it. So he'll switch it for us. So that's how we worked with the background score. And then uh, the songs, uh, of course, he had people written, writing the songs and then we picked... Uh, actually, Chandrachur sings the song. He sings uh, Rangreza song uh, in the film. And then you have his son too there. His son is one of the kid characters, yes. But uh, he sings the song Rangreza, that's a romantic song between me and my, you know, Govind Rahul, who plays Govind. So that's one romantic song that we have in the film. And, um, and of course, uh, there's another song that's Aapka, it goes leads through the movie, Aapka Pata. Mm -hmm. And that's Anuj Garg's wife who sings the song, Diksha Garg. So she's the one, because I really liked her. Mm -hmm. I love her voice and I was like, okay, we should use her. Of course, he had suggested all different people, but I was like, no, I want these people to sing. So that was the way it worked out. And um, so this is going to be playing from June 1st to the 7th at the Cinema Village, 22 East, 12th Street, that's downtown Manhattan. And that's before shows every day? There'll be four shows every day, yes. Wow. And it's actually releasing it also in LA. From oh, it is? Same time? No, May 25th through May 31st, and that's five times a day. So, I mean, it's a good try. I mean, you made the film and it looks good. And at least the people who have seen it have given us really good feedback. Uh, so, and especially the Americans have loved it because they say they love the cinematography. They love the look of it, the feel of it. So it gives you the very good feeling about it. So, I mean, I think, you know, to make a film and then just leave it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So we had to release it somewhere and do something with it. So that was my journey. So after New York and LA, where you want to put this in another film circuit? Or you know, whoever wants University to screen it, like North Carolina will probably have a screening, one or at least one or two. And then um, if it doesn't work out, I know the New Jersey Indian or International Film yeah. Festival is going to screen it. They wanted to screen it, so I said, okay, fine. So they're screening it in June, right after the screening. And because New Jersey people will, of course, want to go there. Um, and then I'll see, because I also want to go to as a digital platform. So hopefully Netflix, Amazon, or whatever will pick it up. And you know, ultimately, it gets to the wider audience. Because I did release it in India, very small scale. Oh, okay. um, that and was it last did well, year. right? Yeah, it was in August. So I mean, I'm just hoping that 
more people get to see it. That's, that's my purpose of making the film. So yeah. hopefully so many more people watch it more through digital platform. Because now a lot of people are asking me in India, when are you bring it to India? And I'm like, oh, I already did it in India. Yeah. So I guess it's maybe just... Maybe to do another rerun there or something like that. Maybe, maybe. It was, it was a challenge to screen it in India. So, so. Uh, you've been acting for the last 10 years. You've done 9-11, then you've done uh, Walk-In, the Golden Years. On Golden Years. Yes. Uh, and. Um, uh, so most of my short film and then I've done several like of course I've been in the slap a small scene uh, in NBC and then um, I did two things in India a Dalit one time and uh, okay. fear files so I mean I've done whatever small small things industrials you know voiceovers I've done uh, hosting some hosting I've actually done some hosting here before uh, but uh, so yeah anything that comes along you know and now I'm going to you know, since it's been a four year journey, I really haven't focused as much on acting, so I'm trying to go back into acting. I'm a SAG must join now, so I'm a union must oh, join. Oh, you should, yes. So before I join it, I have to look for an agent. Oh, join the I'm club, I'm in SAG, so that'll be great. <laughs> yes, so I have to, I must join and then I have to look for an agent, which I yes. don't have. So yeah. that's one thing I've never focused on and I should focus on that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So after Yadvi, the Dignified Princess, what can we expect from you? Going Hopefully, back to acting or more direction? Acting. I am an actor. My passion is acting. Um, so it's mostly acting. Uh, direction, you know, I have a music video I might shoot later on, but uh, I've sung a song. But besides that, I think, you know, I'm more into acting. I want to be an actor. And that's, that was my passion. It's always been that. And never, like I said, I didn't want to direct. I ended up directing it because I couldn't find a director in India that, you know, I could work with. So, or I could not pay those directors because they have 10 people working under them. So that's one of the reasons I ended up directing it. So, um, I, you know, I, I mean, maybe I'm a good director, maybe I'm not, I don't know. But, but I feel like, you know, I'm not being trained in it. I like to be trained in something. So acting for sure. Acting for sure. Yes. Well, that's great. And uh, Yadvi, the Dignified Princess, is going to be uh, uh, showing at the Cinema Village, that's 22 East 12th Street from June 1st to the 7th and it's got four shows. If you need more information, you can go to Yadvi, the Dignified Princess .com. So that's easy. It's just the name of the film, Yadvi, the Dignified Princess .com.